from the High Definition Production Center of Troy University's Broadcast and Digital Network at Troy, Alabama's International University. This is Troy Trojan Vision News. Hello and welcome to Troy Trojan Vision News for November 9th, 2017. I'm Madison Neal. And I'm Sarah Singletary. Thank you for joining us this evening. Senate candidate Roy Moore is facing new allegations of sexual assault that allegedly happened decades ago. The accusations were first reported by the Washington Post and come just about a month before the special election to fill Jeff Sessions' Senate seat. Seth Lemon has more details from Capitol Hill. Judge Roy Moore stormed onto the political scene when he upset acting Senator Luther Strange in the Alabama race to fill Jeff Sessions' Senate seat. It just come to light and I've just read about him. It's very, very disturbing what I've read about. Thursday, the Washington Post reported allegations from a woman who claims Moore made inappropriate advances and had sexual contact with her in 1979 when she was just 14. Moore denies the claims, calling it fake news. His campaign issued a statement saying, after over 40 years of public service, if any of these allegations were true, they would have been made public long before now. Moore faces his Democratic opponent December 12th, and some Republicans are already calling on him to step aside to give another GOP candidate a chance at winning. I think if he does what uh, he should do, does the right thing, and steps aside, uh, I don't think it'll hurt the public party. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell echoed those comments, saying Moore should step aside if the allegations are true. But Moore won the Republican primary this summer in part by ditching the establishment. Problem is, President Trump's being cut off in his office. He's being redirected by people like McConnell. Moore currently has a double-digit lead in the polls over his Democratic opponent, former U.S. Attorney Doug Jones. Sure Seth Lemon, CBS News, Capitol Hill. No, the Washington Post story says Moore pursued relationships with three other young girls between the ages of 16 and 18 while the man was in his early 30s. All of those women say nothing progressed beyond kissing. Bullying is something that affects more people than we would like to think. Earlier this morning, the Office of Civic Engagement held an anti-bullying summit to help prevent bullying from continuing to spread throughout our campus and community. Chelsea Law has more. Although October is National Bullying Prevention Awareness Month, Troy University is keeping the conversation going. The Office of Civic Engagement held its first anti-bullying summit Thursday morning in Howell Hall. This is the first time we've done an event such as this, and we started to plan it even before recent events have made it very imperative that we have this conversation. And we wanted to bring it to campus just to make Troy a more welcoming environment. Recently, some Troy International students have come forward with reports of being bullied by other students. Livingston believes that the summit will help create a better campus experience for all. I think many people might feel unheard, number one. And number two, some people need to hear it. <laughs> and if we can get those two groups together, I think we can start moving towards a more positive environment on campus. A person who is a victim of bullying may develop some long-term effects that can be detrimental to their health. Abuse of alcohol or drugs, smoking, um, the feeling of isolation, uh, feeling lonely, um, and it, it also ultimately long-term can affect their academic achievement also. Livingston says that when it comes to bullying, there is no real winner. Everyone's a victim, really. No one wins when there's bullying because people who bully may bully because they have once been harassed, discriminated, hazed. So I think that it's a culture that needs to be broken. The Office of Civic Engagement is in the process of getting bullying policies included in the student handbook. Chelsea Law, Troy, Trojan Vision News. The next event that the Office of Civic Engagement will hold is the Justice for Peace Forum in Montgomery this spring. Autumn is here, which means leaves are falling and trees are going dormant for the winter. And while the cool weather and bare branches may make it seem like Mother Nature is taking a break, one Montgomery-based organization says tree planting season is just getting started. Over 100 trees sat in the Home Depot parking lot on Montgomery's East Boulevard Thursday morning. The best part about them? They're actually free. Montgomery Trees is the urban forestry group for the city, and thanks to a grant they received back in August, they were able to give away live oak trees to whoever walked up and wanted one. 
Even if only 25% of them actually make it in the ground and grow, I mean, that's still more trees. So um, we'll keep giving them out as long as people want them. Organizers say Thursday's cool, wet weather makes it the perfect day not only to pick up a free tree, but to plant one. Despite the weather, people are coming out to get their free trees. <laughs> Today is a very good day to plant trees because it is cold and it is wet. And dormant trees like cold and wet. And according to Stringer, the young trees being planted today will become the city's historic trees hundreds of years from now. The older neighborhoods with the, with a tree that's two, three hundred years old, trees don't last forever, but you can plant this one now and expect to get three or four hundred years out of it. For Debbie Green, these trees are worth the wait. I'm not going to see them really big and with their arms all out in my lifetime, but I think, you know, in the future of my kids, my grandchildren might be able to come, you know, whatever happens with our property and play in them. A promise of the future and reminder of the past. Churchman adds that trees also bring unity to the present. Today, everybody, everything's so political and, and partisan and everything, and our trees are just trees. Like, you can't not like trees. If you missed today's live oak tree giveaway, Montgomery Trees will be giving away bare root seedlings in February. And there was a shootout in Sartain Hall last night. Numerous students were involved, but that's what usually happens when the University Activities Council brings laser tag to campus. Lydia Williams gives us a look at one of UAC's most popular events. Tag, you're it. Troy University of UAC had their annual laser tag event right here in Sartain Hall. With UAC having a decent turnout last year, they brought back their annual laser tag this year. Vice President Decorius Johnson explains how students came to have a good time. What made UAC have this event is that last year was a really great turnout, and right now it's a really great turnout. We have a lot of people coming out um, with their friends, um, and so that's what it's all about. It's a good turnout, and like the students love it, then we love it, so we try to bring it back each semester or each year. Students came out and got geared up and had some friendly competition. My favorite part about Laser Tag is basically just getting with my friends and going in there and just like chasing them around. It's really dark and it's fun. It has like really cool music going on um, and burning a lot of calories. Although it was just friendly competition, some participants were excited about winning. Just uh, going out there and dominating the competition. Then some students used this event as an opportunity to interact with some new people. Hey, to meet new people, to hang out, make new friends, and just uh, to come every event so you won't be in your uh, dorm. UAC will have $2 movie night next Tuesday and casino night next Wednesday. Keep up with the latest UAC events on their social media pages at Troy UAC. Lydia Williams, Troy Trojan Vision News. Once again, the UAC will offer $2 movies next Tuesday at the Continental Cinemas. Now, the latest in Trojan sports on Troy Trojan Vision News. Hello and welcome to your Trojan Vision Sports. I'm Brianna Jones. It may have been nice to rejoice in glory being Sunbelt Conference champs last year, but as for the women's basketball team, it's time to attempt replication. Fortunately for the Trojans, they breezed through their exhibition match last week, sealing a 79-54 victory against AUM. And for head coach Chanda Rigby, it was a shocking game coming from the freshmen. We started three freshman guards, and we expected a lot of turnovers. We expected a lot of mistakes, and they really uh, flowed a lot more smoothly than we thought. So, you know, as long as they keep their intensity level, if they don't let um, thinking too much on the court, thinking in a new system, as long as that is, doesn't slow them down, we'll be in good shape. Hopefully the Trojans have prepared well because tomorrow they will take on the Stillman Tigers in Trojan Arena. Tip-off is set for noon. And as for the men's basketball team, who were also last year's Sunbelt Conference champs, they had a letdown early, losing both their exhibition matches to Georgia Southwestern and Mercer. Now Trojan fans are awaiting the return from the winning side of last year as they are currently in Hawaii preparing for their next game. Head coach Phil Cunningham talks about the challenge they're up against. We have Jordan Bernardo and Wesley Person, our all-conference guys back, but most every team has those, has those guys back. So, so the league is going to be top to bottom. Uh, really, uh, I think a lot of parity, a lot of t a lot of teams that uh, can win outside the league. Uh, it's it's going to be a challenge uh, night in, night out. Tomorrow night, the Trojans will take on North Dakota to begin the Rainbow Classic in Honolulu, Hawaii. Tip-off is set for 9:30 p.m. 
Setting over to the volleyball, the Trojan volleyball team have a big night ahead of them as they prepare for senior night against Appalachian State. This game will determine if they make it into the Sun Belt Conference Tournament. Coming off a loss against UL Lafayette, which increased their losing streak to four, the Trojans are still trying to find their groove. Head coach Josh Lauer talks about the team needing support for this big game. Yeah, we play App State next. You know, we had a heartbreaking loss to them uh, the last time we played them, 17-15 in the fifth. Um, you know, and conference tournament bid is going to be on the line. Um, and so, you know, our, our girls know that, you know, we still kind of control our own destiny. And so they're, you know, they're going all out for that. And so um, it's going to be the biggest match of the season. And, you know, we need people here. You know, we, we need some students to come out and, and get behind us and know that, um, you know, know that they care and want to see us play in some postseason and, and give us a chance to get in the tournament. Once again, the Trojans will host Appalachian State tomorrow night in Trojan Arena and Coastal Carolina on Saturday. Both games are set for 6.30 p.m. The Trojan football team is preparing to head to Conway, South Carolina to take on the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers. Jordan Chun will look to become Troy's all-time rushing yards leader. He is 465 yards shy of Troy University Sports Hall of Fame member Ted Horstead. Although it's an honor, Chun says that he is more concerned about the win. Like I said, like, like I said last Thursday, Adam does a good job of reminding me that I'm that close. I don't really pay attention to it. I'm, in high school, I wasn't really a big stat guy, so it kind of have a toll on me right now that I, I really don't be paying attention to it until I guess I break it. Once again, the Trojans will take on Coastal Carolina on Saturday in Conway, South Carolina. Kickoff for the game is scheduled for 3.30 p.m., and the game will be televised on ESPN3 and broadcast on the Troy Radio Network.